Hey friends, so today I'm bringing you one of my most requested videos, and this is how to use Operator to make all the kind of sounds that you'd ever want to use in your songs. As some guy put it, uh, bread and butter sounds. So yeah, I'm really excited about this episode too. This is going to be really fun, and I just should say thank you guys so much for the last couple videos of the support, the comments, the subs, I mean everything. It's just, it's just awesome to feel supported in this. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and dive in. Um, before I start, just remember that you can skip to whatever section you want to skip to if there's something specific you want to learn, or you can watch the whole thing, which I highly recommend. Okay, so first off, we're going to make a kick drum, okay? I know I made a kick drum in the last one. We're going to make all the drums, all the drum sounds you might want to use, but let's just go ahead and make a kick drum, okay? Um, because I feel like there's more, to, there's more that I didn't go over last time, so... Okay, so first thing I need to do is to make a, a quick quick envelope, a snappy envelope, you know, like something that's there and then gone. Right? And the next thing I need to do is I need to turn on my, my pitch envelope, okay? If I pull this all the way up, the peak, that means that the peak is 48 steps away from where it's going to end up, right? So I get... Right? And if I play it down lower, that's the sound that I get, right? But it's a kick drum, so I need to make it go faster. Like I'm hitting the, the head of the beater, or this is a sample I'm trying to make. Right? If the, if the decay is lower, you get this. Right? Now, this is, just, just to, as an aside before, I, I told you guys already, this is, this is a note because I haven't fixed the frequency of this. A lot of tutorials say, yeah, if you're making kick drum, fix the frequency. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, especially if you're making uh, electronic music, you can tune your kick drums, you know? You might as well just have this be an F if I'm playing an F, or have this be an F sharp if I'm playing an F sharp, right? Okay, so now on the second oscillator. I'm going to make this also kind of snappy, and I'm going to turn this this up, and I'm going to leave it on this first algorithm, okay? Because I get... Something I didn't go over in the, in the last one is that I can add some really interesting harmonics and make this kick drum really snappy, da -da 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 -da, you know? I'm going to turn this up for now. Listen to how much more... Uh, just, there's a lot of body. This is kind of, I like to think of this as, this is the fundamental, right? This is the body. Right? Just choose where you want that body to be, right? And then for the final, remember before, we added a, a snap of the, of the beater head hitting the beater, right? So, now you can leave it like this, because it is, it can only spit out sound as long as the other oscillators have their envelope set this way. I mean, this one is, is also being uh, fed into this one, so this one could also be up. But what I like is to be able to have control over the envelope of each one of these sounds, okay? Now, they're all being fed into each other, and that's why we get this. But then again, just like with any sound we're going to make, you can browse through the algorithms and kind of figure out where you like it. That's kind of nice. But I'm going to stick to this first algorithm, okay? All right, so so now I've got a playable. I got a playable kick drum that moves around with the tuning of my song. And 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 just as an aside, I also really like to add some shapers to kick drums to really all the drums. It just this is just something I would do on the on the end stage anyway. Might as well do it here too, right? So so then again, without the shaper, with the shaper. Kind of just, I mean, you can think of it as gelling all the sounds together. You could also go pretty hard with this, but just remember it's going to change the sound. So this is hard shaping. And you also have a dry wet control. This is really nice. You can. Right? So there you go. As you play up and down, the body's going to remain the same because not only is this note changing, but so is this. Obviously, the white noise can't change notes. It's just pretty much a white noise player. You could think of it that way. Okay? So that's a kick drum. All right. Let's make a snare drum. So a snare drum is kind of the same thing, but let's check this out. So I'm going to make a... Might as well go with a triangle or something. Something just a little bit slightly... Has a little bit more harmonics. Okay? Just a little bit more. All right? So I'm going to my uh, envelope, and I'm dropping it down. Let's go ahead and play up high. Okay, just think of how long the decay of a snare drum is, right? So, I'm going to turn this up a little bit. Okay, so then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my pitch envelope. Just like on anything else, drum-wise, you get a you have a pitch envelope when you hit a, a drum head, right? So, I'm turning this up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
So there's there's the the body of my drum, right? Now on the next track, I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to put this on this algorithm, okay? And the reason is because I want both of these elements to be independent, okay? So I've got the, the tone of the drum, this. And now on this one, I'm going to choose white noise, okay? And that's the sound of my, of my oscillator. But what I need to do is obviously do the same thing. I need to have more of a decay. But I also need to have a little, little bit of attack because the initial sound of hitting a snare drum is the, is the head and then the bottom snare the actual snare of the snare drum vibrates and makes that white noise, it waits a little bit, right? So, hear that? Okay, so that's not it. The next thing you need to do is you definitely want to turn on a shaper. Uh, you know, we'll start with, uh, with the, the soft. Well, let's go to the hard. Okay, so now all you need to do is mix these two. Now that you've got this, this, this hard shaper set up, I think it has way too much tone and not enough snap, right? Now I just need to figure out where to play it, you know? One thing I could do is I could play it higher up on the keyboard, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fix the frequency, right? So... And I'm gonna make this uh, decay a little bit faster. Now because the saturator is on, it's gonna kind of skew these, these envelopes, right? You gotta kind of just mess around with it. This is just a little bit long for me. Okay, so, right? There's your snare drum. I mean, it can play it lower. But that's your classic 808 snare drum, you know, 606 snare drum. Boom, right? All right, let's make some hats. So in this first envelope, I'm gonna make it really, 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 really fast, right? But we're making hats, so we gotta kinda go up high pitch, right? So there's one. Let's go ahead and, and turn up the other one. We're going up in these course. We're getting these, these kind of high-pitched, snappy sounds, right? But what we also need is we need some white noise. Once again. <laughs> okay. Now what I can do is I can choose these different algorithms until I find something close to what I'm looking for. Now, I, by opening, by leaving these kind of more closed off, these are like the initial like smacking uh, symbol with your stick, right? This sound, here, I'll turn it off, right? This is just those tick sounds. That's like hitting a symbol with a stick, right? And then this oscillator, this noise oscillator, is the actual ringing, right? And it's, it's kind of like white noise, right? So as I open this decay up, You can even give it just a little bit less attack. Maybe just a little bit, yeah. And now you've got hi-hats. And if you want to open a hi-hats, just... Right? <laughs> just by changing that decay. All right, so there we go. Let's make a tom drum. So a tom drum, just like a kick drum, right, we've got decay and we've got our pitch envelope. But in this case, we don't want the pitch envelope to do too much, because toms, we like them to be like one sound. Right? Sorry, that's quiet. Now remember, if we want to add some body, we can just modulate this with another oscillator. And then, of course, got to put our white noise in there, right? But in this case, I want to kind of separate these, right? There, now we've got this oscillator by itself, so just a little bit of... In fact, I'm going to actually do it this way. I'm going to pull down the attack stage peak, the peak volume. You can also mix waveforms this way. So now I've got a nice snap at the beginning of that tom. Okay, so now that we've got the basic drum sounds out of the way, let's go ahead and make a lead, okay? When you, when you start up operator, it's pretty much set up for a lead, except that you kind of want to have just a little bit more attack, okay? So I'm gonna turn this up and now we get... 
right? But what you need to do is you need to go into the master section and turn the voices down to one, right? So now we have a monophonic voice. But in order to make it smooth, we want to turn on the glide. So you just pick, uh, click on the pitch envelope section and turn the glide on, the little G right there. I'm actually going to open the attack up just a little bit more. Seems like five milliseconds is that sweet, that sweet spot that really just makes that work. So now that you've got this set up, man, you can just go hog wild. You can just start messing around with all these controls. <laughs> Mess around with chorus, mess around with these levels, and all of a sudden you've just got endless lead sounds for days. Right? right? Um, another thing that leads do is they tend to have vibrato. So you can turn the retrigger off, turn your, your rate up just a little bit, and uh, turn your amount to zero, and then blend it until you like it. I find that amounts under 10 usually do the trick for me. Okay, and then another thing you can do is you can remember you can make the uh, LFO happen over time, so... Right? So the next thing I want to go over is just adding a little bit of movement to this. And another thing that you can do is is you can use this extra envelope to affect some extra parameters on operator. So one thing you can do is you can, when you turn it on, you gotta, you know, this is obviously how you add your amount. You can turn these off, okay? These are the original destinations. This is destination to pitch, right? Or to the LFO rate. What you can also do is you can send this to, for example, tone, right? So this is this is a really great way to add some movement. So if I turn this on tone, remember tone, this is what tone does. I'm gonna turn this off. This is what tone does. Right? So you could do that manually, or you could just use this really awesome uh, envelope to do that instead. And we're gonna turn this envelope into an LFO, okay? So how do you do this, you might ask? Well, I'm gonna turn up the attack rate, or the, the uh, attack time, okay? And I'm gonna do maybe something like 300 milliseconds. I'm going to do the same thing with the decay. So they're kind of relatively the same uh, speed. Then I'm going to loop them. So now we've got... And as I turn this pitch envelope up, it's going to affect this tone knob. Do you hear that? So something we can do is we can kind of make this less of a... the, the slope be just about the same. And we'll make these go all the way down to the bottom so they have the fullest possible... Uh, sweeping range. I guess this would be the fullest sweeping range. So now what have we made? We've made a triangle shape LFO, right? So now I have this moving, really cool sounding moving lead. And I'm gonna just maybe just make this happen just a little bit less, right? be saying, well, man, if I open Serum, it sounds so much better. Dude, all right, just just as an aside real quick, this operator is a building block. Ableton is the synthesizer, okay? Operator is a building block. We're creating the beginning of an amazing sound. In my next video, we're going to go over how to expand operator into, again, I'm going to stand by my words, the most powerful synthesizer that you can get, okay? Um, but for now, we're just using operator. And, and just to prove my point, I'm just going to turn on some, re some reverb. Like, you might say this... You might say, well, that doesn't sound that cool. Well, just listen. Right? Just a little bit of reverb. Just, it changes the game. Okay? That's the sound before. That's the sound with the reverb, right? It changes the game. Okay? Just, just, just that alone. And we're not, we're not going to stop anywhere close to that. We're going to do all kinds of stuff using Ableton as basically the modular synthesizer that it is. Okay? But there you go. That's, that's kind of like a lead template, you know? The first thing you do is you make the voices go down to just one voice and then you turn your glide on and then the you know the rest of the world is your hamster you know you can you can make an original lead so fast just by kind of changing some of these things right here right oh one thing i want to show you before i go uh with this is since these are all fm stacked right we're using this first uh 
first algorithm. What I can do is I can actually turn off some of these. And what's going to happen is different sets of harmonics are going to happen because these ratios are no longer being preserved, right? Some of these uh, oscillators are staying static while other ones are being uh, pitch modulated by the LFO. So you get this. You could almost think of it as like making it more rude, right? So here's a more soft. Now it's more rude. Okay, so that's a lead. Let's go ahead and make another kind of lead, okay? Let's make like a flute lead, all right? So this first oscillator, I'm gonna leave it on a, on a sine waveform, okay? Second oscillator, I'm gonna leave it on a sine and just give it just a little bit more character. Okay, and again, if I'm making a lead, I wanna turn my glide on, I wanna turn my voices down to one, right? So I get. Now a flute player also uses wind. So we need to turn on the, the noise oscillator, right? And we need to make sure that it's separate, okay? So it's separate from everything else. It's not being affected by the other. So there's that noise, right? But the first thing that I, I want to I go back to is I'm actually going to turn these oscillators off, and we're just going to listen to this first one. A, fl a, a flute player can't get to full volume right away, so we need to... Even longer than the synth lead, we need to, we need to make this attack a little bit longer, maybe like 50 milliseconds. And we need to make the release just a little bit longer so it's a natural decay. Right? Now let's just go ahead and, and since these are separate, let's just leave the second oscillator out of it for now. Turn this on and now we get... We're getting there, but it's not quite it. The wind takes a while to come in, so we need to pull that back a little bit. Maybe a couple... You know, maybe, maybe about half the, the length. So yeah, like 30 milliseconds. And then the next thing about it is that nobody nobody blows white noise, right? That's the, that's definitely not how that works. So what we need to do is actually pull this down a little bit. And now we get maybe more of a natural like wind kind of sound, right? Right? And then the next part I want to do is I'm going to go back to this second oscillator, right? And I want to find something where C is not being affected, but these other two are. So I think it's this square, D is affecting C, and B is affecting A. So now we get... Okay, so now we've got some, some nice movement, and the next thing I want to do is, obviously, we're going to add a little bit of... a little bit of uh, LFO. And again, again, just taking the attack and pulling it back a little bit really makes this more of a natural thing. Especially if you make it longer, so... And so obviously this move kind of brings a lot of the, the top end out, so we can add it back in by using a shaper. And I'm actually going to use some of these other filter modes. Let's try this one out, okay? We'll try the soft. There it is. Now do you, do you hear that tone? Boom. All of a sudden we've fused these kind of loose sounds together into a, a single unit. And you can hear those harmonics kind of whoah. Don't believe me? Let's put some reverb on it. Okay, so there's our little flute lead, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and make some keys with the operator. So operator really is amazing at making your classic FM style keys, okay? And it can be extremely expressive. So when we start out, I'm going to turn this reverb off. When we start out, we have no ability to take the sound and have any velocity, right? Right Right now, I can hit this key as hard or as soft as I want, and I get the same sound. So right over here at this velocity section, if I turn this up to about halfway, I can get somewhat of a natural kind of keyboard-style velocity. So it's actually pretty loud now. Right? But that's not enough. When you're playing keys, 
by holding it, you never have full volume the whole time. That's what a synth does. Like when, when you press a key on a piano, what happens is if you hold the key down, the string will ring, but it'll never be as loud as when the hammer hit it. So you need to pull your sustain down a little bit and you get more of a natural. And in order to hear what's going on, we need to add some harmonics in. Now, if I just chose like a square waveform, it still sounds like a synth. Let's not go there. Instead, we're gonna leave this on sine mode and we're just gonna leave this first oscillator or this first algorithm set up like this. And I'm gonna turn up the second. So now we're getting closer to some key sounds, right? But something that's going on is that because there's no velocity on the second oscillator, we're not going to get very a uh, variance in the sound. But if I turn this velocity up by playing different hard amounts, I get different amounts of FM index, so I get different sounds. So what that kind of is akin to, when I think about that, I think about that like hitting a, a Rhodes piano hard or not, or a Wurlitzer not as hard, right? So. You see all the all the the variety that's happening there now. Now also with with these instruments, we have the attack stage, the 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 tines, if you will, of the of when the hammer hits whatever you know electronic device that it is. So on a Rhodes, you get this. You need to have also sort of sort of like a tine sound, right? So I can add that with this third oscillator, right? Hear that? But it needs to be high pitched, right? And obviously that's loud, so we're going to pull it back in. And to me, like for my tastes, I feel like this could be maybe just a little bit less. The second oscillator is really kind of making it. Um, a little vowel, like more vowel, vowel if than I like it. So I'm going to pull it back. And see, now this is where uh, drawing in some oscillator um, harmonics can really help you out. So let's find a good spot to, to put in a little bit of like tine action, right? Do you hear that? Now, if you want to get a natural sound, obviously these higher harmonics need to be a lot quieter than the fundamental, but we can add a little bit of... a little bit there. Now just listen to how nice that is. Now another thing I can do is I can I can also change the velocity associated with with the tine sound, right? So just a little bit there, and obviously I need to pull it back for whatever I add. Okay. So yeah, there's keys. So the next thing I want to do is I want to make a pluck sound because this is a pretty, you know, pretty similar situation. In a pluck though, Obviously, when you're making a pluck, you know, you want to make something like, you know, you're plucking a string, right? So, first of all, I'm going to turn off this reverb. So, the first thing I want to do is get sort of this, a fast envelope in the same way that I would be designing a drum, right? But in this case, what I, what I also need to do is I need to open the release a little bit. Do you hear those releases? Might help a little bit if I add a little bit of FM to it. Now, in order to hear those those releases, the reason that we don't right now is because the second oscillator doesn't have that same envelope. So what I need to do is I need to copy the envelope from A. So now we get... Right? I'll turn this up a little bit. Now the next thing that I need to do is I need to kind of make some decisions. You know, what kind of pluck am I making? Maybe this decay is longer, and this one is shorter. 
Maybe this oscillator is affecting the other oscillator in a different way. So it's, it's uh, shorter, and I have these cascading different lengths. Right? So this is a kind of pluck that's made with FM, right? We're using FM synthesis to create a pluck, right? And that, that's, you know, that's a, that's a pretty awesome sound. Now I can turn on, uh, in, the, in the other video, I want to show you something real fast. If you put the LFO on high mode, like it's, it's just going so fast, uh, as you turn this up and you put it on sample and home mode, sorry, you put it on sample and hold mode, you get this... This kind of cool, like, distortion kind of sound. Right? <laughs> but small amounts of this... can add a lot of character. Hear that? And obviously, once again, a little bit of shaper can go a long way, so... Because what is this doing? It's fusing all the sounds together into something cohesive. And then put some reverb on it and boom. Really like that sound. It's a good one. Okay. So that's one way to make um, a pluck. Plucks can be so many different things. Another way you can make a pluck is to make an extremely harmonic sound. So let's just go ahead and really just crank up some harmonics, right? Turn off this reverb, sorry. So there's a really harmonic sound, right? Another thing that we can do is instead of using the volume envelope, we can use a filter envelope instead. Okay, so I can just turn this filter frequency all the way down, turn the envelope up. Now we're closing off the volume, but we're closing off the filter instead, right? But something that is really nice about this is that by using different modes, different shapers, and different amounts of resonance, you get all these different sounds. So... So let's go ahead and try to add some shaper. And let's go ahead and uh, change these filter modes around, right? Now again, by turning this one down, because this oscillator is kind of determining how much of the fundamental is being taken out, I can get a little bit more of that fundamental back in, right? So there's a totally different pluck. Now check this out. A little bit of reverb and boom. And there's a little bit of thud sound when I let go of the key. So I'm just going to open some of these releases up just a little bit. As well as the release of the filter. Right? And again, I'm just adding reverb to show you guys just how high quality this can sound in in a situation where it's got actual ambience on it. Right now this is just a dry building block to a complete sound, right? So those are two different kinds of plucks. All right. So let's get into making some strings. So so synth strings are really kind of formulaic, all right? You just have a bunch of sine or sorry, a bunch of saw waveforms. And the envelope is pretty much the same, so we're going to do this real fast, all right? I'm, I'm going to open the attack stage over maybe, yeah, maybe like 90 milliseconds. Really long, right? So I'm also going to have a pretty long release. So that's just one oscillator, right? Now I'm going to... Start adding the other ones, but what I want to do is I want to keep them all separate, okay? So each one of these, what I can do now that I've done that is I can copy all the settings that I just made on this oscillator to the other one. So right-click, copy from oscillator A, copy from oscillator A, same thing, right? Now it's just a lot louder. 
That doesn't help us, right? So the next thing we need to do is just make a couple changes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of, because these are all stacked on top of each other, they don't need to be as loud. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make different sections of strings, quote unquote, right? So <clears throat> we're going to go an octave up and an octave down. So we've got like the bass, the cellos, the violas, and then the violins, right? Okay, so now I've got this big spread, all right? Now the next thing I need to do is I need to kind of detune them a little bit, right? So the, the, the unfortunate thing is that the fine doesn't go back and forth. So one thing you can do is I could go all the way down to zero and go all the way back up to um, a thousand fine points, which is basically one octave, right? So listen, in fact, I'll just show you. So, right? So if I pull this down a little bit, it's the same as just detuning the other way, okay? Just just as an aside. So this is going to be a little sharp. Maybe this one will be down one and a little flat, okay? So now we get... It's a little bit too much. Boom, just little fine amounts. And then if I turn on my LFO, because these are all separate, I can actually make the, the top registers. So like C and D, I can make those. Those are the ones that are kind of, you know, doing the vibrato while, while the bass instruments are not. There you go, those are just synth strings, right? So making a pad is pretty much the same thing. You've got a long attack, a little bit of sustain down, and then a long release, right? Now, if I just turn up the second oscillator, it, it's not gonna do the same thing as the first one. So, you know, let's just go ahead and make this a square. This is gonna be a square situation. And of course, if I'm going to do this and I'm going to make all these oscillators discrete, I have to turn the volume down. So I'm choosing this algorithm and I'm just going to copy these initial settings from this oscillator to these. But in this case, I'm just going to use one of these oscillators to detune it with the LFO, right? So if we just listen to this oscillator by itself, Maybe just a little bit less. And you notice how when I take my key up, that vibrato stops. I need to definitely make sure the release time is, is at least as high as the release time on here, which is seven milliseconds. So I need to go in here and do the same thing, right? So, so now when I turn on all the rest of these, I get this bigger sound. And I can take this a step further just by uh, turning this oscillator an octave down, but going all the way up in my fine and just going down just a little bit and using this one to just go up a little bit. And then I get. And then, of course, adding a little reverb. And then. And again, this is a good application yet again for another, for some more spread, right? So. Okay. So there's a pad. So, moving on, let's do some bass. And I know that everyone's been really excited about this. So I want to, I want to kind of go over the the methodology of making some different modern basses, right? In fact, I'm going to focus on two. One is the Reese or Neuro bass. Everybody wants to make this thing. And I'm, again, I'm going to say this is going to be a lot more awesome uh, in the next episode when I can show you some more uh, tools that you can use to make this even cooler. But for now, let's just use Operator to make one. So you know. We're going to start with a sine waveform, turn up just a little bit, right? So there's our, our, our sine oscillator, and, and, and then we're also going to use a saw waveform, okay? And we're also going to use a noise oscillator to affect the saw, okay? So remember, this is an index amount. If I'm in this algorithm, this is the FM amount that I'm sending to this guy. So I want this to be kind of high because I really want to screw this saw waveform up. I want to screw it up completely. So listen, tell you what, I'm going to turn this up just a little bit. You hear that? 
So obviously I want to do the same thing that I do for any monophonic voice. I'm going to turn this down. I'm going to turn the glide time up, but I'm just going to, it's going to be real quick. Okay. Right. So the next thing I want to do, I want to really protect that fundamental. But what I want to do is I want to add just a little bit of harmonics to it, right? So I can get a little bit more of an audible signal. So let's go down to 16 so we can really see these, right? I'm on the sine waveform, by the way, the first oscillator. Another fun thing to do is to kind of go, to, go an octave down so we can get a lot, uh, a spread between these two. See if we can add the, those octaves in. Okay, so now we've got something going. Now the next thing we want to do is turn on the shaper, right? So in this case, let's go ahead and listen to what we got. Too much volume. Again, these, these shapers, what they're going to do is they're really going to, in the filter section, the shaper, is really going to just tie the room together, if you will. And the next thing we can do is we can add a notch filter. And this is a real big part of this sound. Hear that? And what we can do is we can edit that, that, that section by just moving the filter around. So if I turn the uh, re-trigger off, I can just kind of move that notch filter around. Right? So that's your classic big fat respace. Now we, we're going to be able to do so much more with this in the next lesson. Just uh, just bear with me. That is how you just use operator by itself to create this sound. Okay. And of course you can move the tone around too. If you want to get some more movement, let's just go ahead and do this real quick. I'm going to make yet again, another quick, just uh, fast LFO out of this. You could call this the, uh, the aux envelope, right? And I'm just going to make this pretty slow. I'm going to take like a whole second to get opened and closed, okay? And what I can do is I can turn this up, and I'm just going to make this go to tone, right? Now listen to all that movement we've got. So, now another bass I want to show you how to make is a classic acid bass, okay? So an acid bass is usually either just a, a saw or a square, and that is ran through a resonant filter. So what we're going to do instead of what we've been doing is I'm actually just going to quickly make a bass line, okay? So something that we can kind of, you know, just kind of repeat um, over the course of this so that we can listen to what the sound is doing over time, right? Um, yeah, let's just see what we got. <laughs> I don't know what this is going to be. All right, so now that we've got a riff, let's go ahead and, and, and make some settings. So what I want to do first is I want to get a little bit of resonance into this filter. And this clean filter just has never really done it for me. So leaving it on 24, mo 24 pole mode, I'm actually going to put this frequency somewhere in the middle. Okay. Uh, pull it down a little bit. And the next thing I want to do is I want this envelope to be a really big part of this sound. So I'm going to turn the filter envelope up. So now we got... So you hear that, that envelope moving around. Now, <clears throat> you, can, you know, you can move the center of the frequency around. That's kind of fun. But where this is really going to shine is turning the shaper on. <laughs> How many times have I said that on this? Okay, so a little bit of drive. You get that... You get that squelchy kind of sound, and that's what you're looking for with acid bass. Let's turn it down an octave. Maybe you can hear that that extra, those, those really fat, juicy harmonics. Another thing you can do is you can change the speed of the envelope. You can try different filter modes. 
And then uh, remember, these other filter modes are really going to get you that squelch because the resonance goes farther in these, right? <laughs> Word. So that's that. It's just as simple as that. You know, messing around with the 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 shaper drive. You know, and then you know, let's just go ahead and see what hard does. So I obviously have to kind of compensate a little bit of volume wise, but. And if you want to get ruder with it, you know, you can turn this on to this mode, and you can just get a little bit of detuning with a different uh, sound. So I'm going to make another couple saws. Right? Each one of these are another couple saws. And now I get... And now if I want this filter to kind of move around too, another thing I can do is I can turn on the uh, LFO and just make it move around. So just affecting the filter, turning off re-trigger, and now we get... <laughs> this kind of sounds like a Daft Punk. Yeah, whatever. So let's do a sub bass drop. This is a really classic, a classic move, and it's it's just so powerful with with operator. It's amazing. So let's go ahead and make a uh, decay. Okay, we're also going to make a, a pitch envelope. And remember, because this is going to sustain zero, we know that this is going to end up on the note that we just pressed, right? So if I turn this up, obviously all I need to do is play this lower to get right now. This, there's a lot of flexibility here. First of all, in order to hear this throughout uh, different systems, <clears throat> one thing you can do is you can turn on the shaper, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into the oscillator and I'm just gonna add some harmonics. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and look at this, now that you can hear it. <laughs> I'm gonna take this uh, envelope shape, and there's actually a shaper on, on the envelope stages, so I can get... That's a linear uh, thing, and this is more of like a... So you can change the shape of this, so you can get you know a linear kind of sound. Or you can get what it's normally set on, which is kind of this more natural exponential curve, right? Now, what I'm going to show you, this is the most powerful thing about this. I can take time, turn this up just a little bit. I can take time, and if I, because this, the, I'm doing all of this with envelope stages, if I turn this down, I get really fast. So it's almost in kick drum territory, but if I turn it up, listen. And I'm playing this higher up on the keyboard because a lot of people listening on phones won't be able to hear it, but if I make it an octave lower for the rest of you, there's our classic sub drop, you feel me? And you know, maybe some of you wouldn't want as many harmonics, we can, you know, take some of those out. And then it just comes down to you editing this. Do you want this to be faster? Do you want it not to affect pitch as much? Do you want it to start a little bit lower? You know, these are just little things that you that you adjust, right? So let's take this a step further. I'm going to FM this with another oscillator, but what I want it to do is I want it to come up way after we've done the initial drop. So I'm going to open this up over the course of five seconds. Now listen to this. And you can hear that ring. You hear that? A little bit of shaper. <laughs> I sound like a broken record. Now we're making.
making bass effects. Because the second oscillator is coming up slowly. Now, if I, if I affect this one a little bit more, remember we're in this first FM algorithm, I get... It's all dependent on this first envelope and the decay rate. Now, if I change time... That's a lot slower. Super fast. So, you know, messing around with time is really great when you've got everything that you're doing based on the speed of the envelopes, right? Now, another thing that I can do is I can change this to maybe a more harmonic waveform. Like, uh, let's just go with the 4-bit sign. And now I can use the filter to kind of... It's a slightly dirtier sound. Right? So you can think of that kind of like as a transition sound. Let's make a different kind of transition sound. So now I'm going to I'm going to take um I'm going to make some less tonal sounds, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a just use the sign, but I'm going to use the second oscillator as a noise oscillator. And I'm going to fix the frequency of the of the the sine one, right? I want it to not be that that audible, right? Now, what I've done, what I, the reason I did this is because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the filter, and I'm going to actually filter out that sub bass. So I'm going to pull it up to maybe like yeah, 150. Now listen, what happens when I change this? So what I can do now is I can use the envelope from this original oscillator as I, and I can open it up over time. Now what I can do is I can use this extra envelope over here to really kind of dial this in, right? So I need to turn it on. I need to turn these off. Destination to oscillator volume B. Now we get, now we get a... So that's kind of like what I would want if I wanted a, 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 you know, a downbeat sound, so. Right? So now that I've got that, I can go ahead and map that same pitch envelope if I want to, I could also take that to the, fil the filter frequency. Now I get... Right? And with a little bit of release... To do the same thing on the filter. And on this oscillator. Turn these all the way up, why not? <laughs> That's probably too much. We're going to keep this at 10 seconds. Yeah. So that's a great kind of downbeat sound, right? Yeah, and so now I can even mess with the tone control and I get these different... Or... You know, messing around a little bit with this. Resonance, changing the filter frequency. Really useful transition sound, right? There are just so many sounds you can make with this thing, especially in, in terms of, of sound effects. I could use the next 400 hours making these. But yeah, there you go. So there are some really hopefully useful uh, bread and butter sounds that you can use 
all over the place in all of your songs. Um, Operator just, it's just a, a wellspring of ideas. And, you know, whenever you make something, just, you know, sliding through these algorithms can really change a lot. So again, thanks everybody for uh, the support from the last couple of videos. It's really been awesome. If you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe, and, you know, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to be expanding Operator into what it was always meant to be, and it's a, a part of a larger voice, okay? So stay tuned for that. So much love, everybody. I'll see you next time. Thanks.